welcome to Pathways of Hope. Hi, I am Lorna Campos. What to do in situations when people come to you with their accusatory questions in debate competitive mode? Ah, does one retaliate? Does one react in anger? Does one sit down to strategize how to respond? I must admit, when that happens to me, I tend to react defensively. If I had spikes, they'd come up, attack, with my slew of facts and supporting evidence. Through time, I've learned there are different ways that one can choose to respond. And let's see from John 8, 1 to 11, what can we learn about this? Jesus sitting down, teaching other people. And then in comes this group of elders and they're dragging along this disheveled woman. Teacher, this woman was caught in the very act of committing adultery. In our law, Moses commanded that such a woman must be stoned to death. Now, what do you say? They said this to test him. There could have been several responses here, right? One, since they quoted Moses, then maybe Jesus would also quote Moses. The Lord said, I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy. Or one response could be Jesus saying, How did you catch her in the act? How long did you watch? Instead, Jesus chooses to be silent. He bends down and writes on the ground. This is an invaluable lesson. The power of silence. The power of the pause. But one could think, why did he keep silent? My guess? Mm, maybe he was giving them time to cool down. Oh, yeah. Hot-headed. Or maybe he was thinking of the woman, her plight, her concerns. They continued to question him. And as they questioned him, he straightened himself up. He said, Whichever one of you has committed no sin may throw the first stone at her. And once again, he went down and wrote on the ground. Now, this is an intelligent and wise answer. You know, because you think about it. He does not attack them. So he's not antagonizing anyone, you know. Diplomatic. He's not going against the law. He's not a lawbreaker. He's not saying don't stone. Yet his response is one that gives them time to stop, to think on their actions. And then they went away. What could have been on the minds of these men as they walked away? Could they have been confused? Could they have been self-aware all of a sudden? Or were they plotting to come back? We're going to catch you again, Jesus. Watch out. But I would think that even if just for one, one person who stopped and pondered on his life and decided to make a change. Wow. Such a great response of God. So now we turn to the woman. This possibly could have been the last moments of her life. What was she thinking? These were her last moments, probably. She was about to be stoned. Did her whole life flash in front of her? Was she distraught, in pain, guilty? And then Jesus asks her, Where are they? 
Is there no one left to condemn you? No one, sir. Well then, I do not condemn you either. Go. But do not sin again. If I were that woman, and I heard the words, neither do I condemn you, go your way, I probably would have fainted. Wow, a second chance at life. Whew, such a turn of events. When I reflect on this scene, what comes to me is choosing to respond in love. Jesus being attacked and tested by the scribes and elders, chooses to respond in love. He does not condemn them. He gives them a way to reflect on life. And the woman, she should be stoned. She's caught guilty. Yet Jesus again responds in love and shows her a way that she may live. Wow. If today, you're in a predicament of sorts where people are accusing you, condemning you. May you have the grace for patience, perseverance, and wisdom. Or maybe you're in the shoes of this woman, caught in sin, despair, pain, and hurt. May you have the grace to receive God's redeeming and restoring love. God bless!